Next, Larry Roundtree, he told him that pill like Jim Brown. Come on, Larry. <laughs> Appreciate that, boy. Appreciate that. Hey, buddy, hold up. First of all, this Jim Brown, I respect Jim Brown. He's the greatest running back ever. I'm not, you know, we had to throw that out the one. Hey, yeah. what's up? Hey, Larry, you're a guy that's been here a while. To, to finally beat Kentucky, but not just that, to do it with you getting so many carries and you guys dominated Kentucky in the line of scrimmage, just how does it feel? What are you feeling right now? I feel good, man, to finally, you know, get over that hump. You know, like like Bled said, it was a little flea just nagging our ears, so we just had to get that done. But it feel good, though, actually winning. And, you know, in the last couple of years, it's the – the possessions that I mean, the position that we were in, it was more of they had the ball. So when Bled and our defense made that big play, that that just gave us more confidence that that the game was over for was over there. Larry, did you have an idea coming into this game that that you would be asked to carry the ball thirty seven times? Um, no, nah, not really. But I'll just say, Coach Drink said we was gonna run the ball. It, you know, the game was gonna be won in the trenches today. So on both sides. So establish the run and keep running. And, and as as Marshawn Lynch said, keep up running the ball over and over and over again. That's what he said last night. He said, we're going to run the ball over and over and over again. Larry, 37 carry. When will you feel that? Do you feel that now already or will it be when you wake up tomorrow? No, I'm fine. I can play tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, Larry, once again, congratulations on the victory. Uh, how does how does it sound to hear Larry Roundtree third time leading third most leading rusher in the history of the University of Missouri football? Like, how does that sound? Um, it's crazy because honestly, like me coming to college, that was never a goal. You know, I I never would have thought in a million years that I'd be third. You know what I'm saying? But that's besides the point. I knew coming here, you know, as long as I ran for my teammates and my mom, then everything would take care of itself. So it was, I mean, it's it's a shocker to me because I never thought it was going to happen. So it's it just, every time I hear it, it's just a shocking moment. But I don't try to worry about it. I'm, I'm just worried about my teammates and running hard for them, you know, for a greater cause. Hey, Larry, you guys had a couple of really long drives, I believe one of nine and then one of seven minutes. What does that just say about your offense and the mindset to keep keep these drivers alive and keep picking up third and fourth downs, um, especially during that drive right after halftime. And, yeah. Okay. Well, one thing it helps, it helps keep our defense fresh. Um, two, it shows that we can sustain long drives without getting tired. You know, obviously when we was on long drives, they were getting tired. They couldn't, they couldn't function. So they had to have guys fall down and act like they were hurt when they really weren't hurt. But I would just say it just shows that we're more, we're more in shape than them, and we outplayed them, and they were tired. And basically, it shows that who was better prepared on the field. Andrew Ball, go ahead. Yeah, Larry, there was uh, that play at the end of the end of the fourth where you kind of fell out of bounds, and everyone was really pumped at the, at the on the sideline. What kind of energy did you feel at that moment there? I, I didn't fall. Oh, you didn't fall. Sorry, you ran out of bounds. Yeah, kind of. Something happened though, but. And that's why that's why it was a lot of injury because of the action that happened before I ran out of bounds. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just – that's what I'm supposed to do. You know, I'm supposed to run and, and get yards. But I'll just say as far as today, the uh, the enthusiasm as far as the team as a whole was so great. Like, I could feel it on the sideline. Everybody's just feeding off of each other. And, that, and that's what makes, like, these wins so special is when everybody's enthused because, you know, you want your sideline to be enthused because you feed off that no matter – from the field, you looking on the sideline, you see everybody pumped up. That gives you more energy, you know. So it's just, it, it, it's great. It's something that our team is taking over, and the enthusiasm is every game is getting better and better. So I just want to see us do that for the rest of the season. Natalie Jones, go ahead, and then we got time for one more. For Larry. You know, you mentioned getting better and better. You guys have two wins now. What does it mean to you guys, momentum-wise, to finally see you know the results of what you guys have been working on under Coach Drink and you know, what does it mean to you? I mean, to me, it, it, it means a lot. But at the end of the day, you can never get too comfortable, you know, with being on a, 
a win, you know, two two wins. But I would just say it feels good, but at the end of the day, you never can get too comfortable. You know, you can get beat any any week now that we have SEC games every week. So you never can get too comfortable. So as far as my mindset going on is never get too comfortable. Hey, Larry. So uh, you guys had some injuries on the offensive line today. Can you talk about uh, how the guys who came in played uh, and cleared some holes for you at the end of the game? Um, uh, as far as, like, the O-line, um, I don't remember it. I mean, I think uh, X went down today. X went down today, and uh, Devin came in and played his butt off. He's a freshman, a true freshman, and I always told him to always be ready. So it, just to see him come in and for him to play – play like he like I knew he was going to play it makes me proud right, we'll do one more Larry on that uh that 10 minute drive and it's going 21 plays and it just sort of third downs and fourth downs you keep converting where's the energy coming from as an offense are you saying anything extra to the guys is Connor saying anything or is it pretty much? I don't I really you really don't have to say anything because we know like case before we even get on the field is hey let's have a drive so when we're on the field, it's more of a let's get lined up, let's do what we're supposed to do, and if they can't stop it, we're going to keep running it. So it's more of a when we was driving down for that long, you know, any defense would get tired. So it was more of an aspect of us just doing the little things right and not making mistakes that would kill us in the low red. You know, I've always talked about that last week. You have to score in the low red. Like when we get down there in the low red, there's, there's no, like, you want field goals, but you want to score. Touchdowns win the game. So I feel like this this game we 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 converted in only but one but one red zone. So the two times we were down there, we scored. So it was good. So coming up, uh, Nick Bolton, best linebacker. He gonna be better than he fit. Hold up. Who's that linebacker, man? Oh my God, he played number fifty-two for the Bears. He was cold. He said, "Let's go." Leo Mack. Yup. There you go. Michael Singletary. Next. I ain't that level yet. I ain't at that level yet. <laughs>